Okay, so here we go. Let's hope this works. Um, just to introduce myself, I'm a professional photographer and a videographer. Um, so uh, people hire me to make their photos and their videos. And I'm releasing a lot of that stuff under a Creative Commons license. I'm not going to talk about that business model because there's already a TEDx video of me where I talk about why and how I do that. But in the last years, I've realized that the interest in sharing content is rising. I'm getting more customers that hire me because I'm using Creative Commons. I have to say, to be honest, some people like what I do and some people understand what I do. So for some, it's just a convenience that the content is online, but they don't really get what Creative Commons means and what their benefit is. And I have several customers that really get what Creative Commons can give them more than another photographer that doesn't use Creative Commons. You can also see that the amount of content that is shared is increasing, especially in the glam sector, in the galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. They are opening up their collections, and there is a lot more content online than a couple of years ago, and it's increasing. So every year, there is more content getting online than the year before. But the amount of implemented structural workflows around sharing is zero. Let me explain this. If a museum does a digitization project, then most of the times they do this project, put everything online, and they forget about the entire workflow. So next year they buy a new painting, they don't have the work processes to put that painting online with the rest of their collection. So it's, it's a one-trick pony. They do it once and they forget after, afterwards. There aren't that many, many companies that really have a focus on sharing, that have the, the, the documents, the, the contracts, and really an idea about what they want to share, when they want to share it, and how they want to share it. Why? Well, because purposefully creating open content, and I'm specifically talking about the visual content, photos and videos, is very hard. If you want to create content that is going to be as open as possible, you need a lot of preparation for that. Let me go through a problem, couple of problems. Um, the availability of content right now has mostly been focused on existing content. So how do we get stuff that we have already? And I'm clicking like crazy over here. How do we get that online? I'm, I'm talking about the paintings and about the art, art pieces. Um, but that also means that most of the knowledge that we've gathered so far in the last years is on getting old stuff that's already there online. And the focus on getting new stuff online, well, that's not really there. It's a buggy clicker. Um, one of the problems that people are facing when they're trying to open up content that's already available, photos that have been made, videos that have been made, is that you have the stack of rights. Creative Commons is only about copyright. But if there's a person in the photo, you have portrait right. You have brand right if there's a logo in it. And you have moral right. Do you want your work to be used for that specific goal? You know, do you want your work to be used by a political party that you don't support? Um, and related rights and stack can go higher. If you want to know more about this, Martin Zijnstra is in the room, I think. Um, he taught me this. Oh, he left. But remember his name. And So the lesson learned for the future is to focus more on content that's purposefully made to be open instead of opening existing content. That's what I've learned in the last couple of years. Problem number two. Who of you have ever seen a car commercial? Just raise your hand. Come on, more people have probably have seen a car commercial. Everybody has seen a car commercial. Think about a car commercial. They all look like this. You can't see people unless they are hired actors, and you can't see logos of businesses in the streets. It's all clean. There are some guys with uh, computers, you know, taking all the logos, all the people out of the content after it's been shot. Now, take a look at a typical photo that's being shared a lot on Wikipedia. Times Square, 
You know, it's beautiful, and a lot of car commercials are being shot in environments like these. So, with the quality that we have right now, I did some you know, work on myself because it's, you know, it is released under a Creative Commons license. So I thought I'll just grab this photo, it's 15 megabytes large. I see a logo over there, you know, it's, it's Creative Commons. I can use it, isn't it? So I uh, started playing with it. And boom, I almost have my logo. Now the question is, am I allowed to use this and make my own brand of clothes. Put it, you know, and, and you know what? I'll just put a tag on it on the site where it says Creative Commons. No, I'm not allowed to do this because it's a brand, but it is under a Creative Commons license in a decent quality online. Was that person allowed to do that? I want an expert's opinion about that because I'm not a lawyer, I'm a photographer, but this is one of the problems that I'm facing when I'm making open content for my clients. That we go to uh, a restaurant because they have an event over there and the restaurant is filled with logos of the restaurant. Can we put those photos online? Um, or is this going to be the future of my work to blur everything out just like those people that make those car commercials? Again, the stack of rights. So what we have to learn is to maneuver through that stack of rights. How do we take all these limitations away? Um, so you have Creative Commons for the copyright, quit claims or model releases for the portrait right, letter of approvals, and you need a shitload of documents. Sorry for my words, but it's a lot of preparation. And also, the better the cameras, the bigger the potential problem. Right now, you can buy a DSLR with 50 megapixels. It's unbelievable. Your phone can record 4K video. The problem is only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, so we need to have to deal with that. So lesson number two is learn how to navigate around the limiting rights. And this counts for content creation, but also reuse. Because a lot of people that are reusing open content don't think about these things. I just got an email two weeks ago from a lady whose portrait was online because um, I took her photo during an event, and a big newspaper in the States used her portrait about an article on females in business, and she didn't approve of the use of her photo for that article. So we had to email the newspaper that they took it completely out of context. Problem number three. Suppose I invite you all to dinner, and I make good tomato soup. You're all like, oh man, that's great. You know, I want to make it myself. Right now, I'll give you a bit of my tomato soup. That's it. That's the way, you know, content works right now. But you don't want the tomato soup. You want the recipe, what I did, and maybe even some ingredients that I have laying in my home. Because the soup is the end result. You know, that's, that's what you're going to be using in the end. But the raw materials are most useful to you. The problem there is the point where decisions are being made. The types of content that are being shared are almost only the final product and not the raw ingredients. There's a parallel also between the moment that the decision is being made to share something. Most of the times, content is being shared when it's already done. Not decision is in the decision is not being made when they start producing the content, so from the start. Let's take an example of one of the most complicated uh, productions you can have. You know, video production, you, you have a script writer, you're gonna make a, a, a fictional film, and you have a concept phase, a pre-production phase, a production phase, and a post-production, then you have your publication, and the only thing that is going to be shared is the video. I don't care about your video. That's, that's cool to see what you made with it, but if I want to make a translation, then I want your script or maybe your set design for localization, if I want to make a Mexican version of your Asian movie. Um, also, your special effects, maybe I want to see what you did to it so I can localize it too. Uh, maybe I want your music score so I can make covers of it. I want the raw materials, and these are all the things that you could share.
but you don't want to make 20 different contracts for that. So open by design, if you make open content, then you need a plan from the start. So lesson number three is make a plan during concept or pre-production phase if you are going to make open content. Problem four. If you already know that you want to share and you go online to search for information, 80% of the information you're gonna find is on why you should share. But you've already passed that point. You wanna know what you have to do and how you are going to do it. It's impossible to find that information. It's not documented, nobody has written it down. I've asked several people, what do you put in a contract with somebody that hires you to make open content? And most of them look at me, I don't have like a standard thing that I put in my contract. It's just basic, what do you do stuff. Um, this is what I've been doing the last couple of years with galleries, libraries, archives, and museums, to getting them from having no idea to having an idea. Better comply or explain. And when they have an idea, maybe we can get them to an ambition. And getting them from the thinking phase to the doing phase. Data is easy to share, probably because most of the organizations have made their own data, but they hire people to make their content. So the bottleneck in this entire process is to share the images, the video, and the sound they are having made. So people looking for information on sharing are already convinced. So I want to increase the amount of practical information on how to share, and that's the sharing manual. Um, there are so many more problems, but because of the time, I'll just leave them out. You know, metadata online is also a big problem. Uh, how many open uh, uh, licensed photos you see with the file name IMG underscore and then the number of the camera. And also the choice of platforms for dissemination. Where are you going to publish it? Are you going to use 5.1 Pix? Are you going to use Flickr? Are you going to use Wikimedia Commons? And why are you choosing that platform? Most organizations don't have a clue why they should use the one or the other. So the sharing manual, it's a tool, but because the goal is to increase the amount of implemented structural workflows around sharing, especially nonprofit organizations. Um, I, 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 I'm really baffled by the fact that they don't have a clue yet. And they should comply or explain with opening up content. And that's what I want to do with this project. To go through that pretty easy, pretty fast, is um, we're going to create a first version of a freely available multimedia manual. To put that in pieces, first version, it probably constantly needs updates, new technologies, new tools, new platforms, new licenses, so it will never be done. Freely available because I want everything to be as open as possible, to make the threshold as low as possible for everyone to use it. Multimedia, I'm a video and photography guy, so if I do an interview on video, I can give it to a text writer that can make a book, book out of it. And everybody has his own preferences how he wants to learn. And a manual, a practical guide, so no inspirational stories, but really the next step. Um, it's gonna be flow charts, example text for contracts, use cases, templates and forms for plan making during pre-production, production checklists, metadata credits, evaluation, etc. I already have some of those uh, uh, in draft. And the approach is going to be 40 plus interviews with creators that are really using Creative Commons and other types of open licensed content in a professional manner. So I'm not looking for the amateur that likes to share his photos, but from the persons that really earn their money by making this stuff. Um, the target audience are NGOs, governments, public organizations, and maybe, hopefully, in the future, for-profit organizations. I say this specifically because I'll be jumping a big hole in the air when a company like Pepsi or Coca-Cola or Nike would do a campaign totally on open licensed material. That would be awesome, because that would mean it would be accepted in the real business world. And also the creatives are the targeted audience too because you know it's push-pull. Are you going to educate the clients or the creatives? Um, I'll skip the themes for now. You can find these slides online. The product will be an online mixed media manual. 
I want to print a thousand copies at least to send out by mail to organizations that I believe should be opening up their content. So I can call them three months later, I've sent you a book for free, what have you done with it? So, um, a lot of videos. I'm currently putting out public drafts. Uh, this is one of the examples. Uh, it, it got translated into Italian within a day after publishing it. Um, this is just a simple flowchart that I mean. You know, is there a person in the photo? No, well then we have to check for brands and maybe designs and other stuff. Is there a person in the photo? Okay, is your intended use about the person? Is it journalistic? Yes, well probably you can use it. No, well maybe it's about the event the person was visiting. If yes, then it's also a journalistic. Um, no, well is there any proof of consent? And if that's a no too, then I would say you cannot use this photo because the per person in the photo didn't give permission for that kind of use. And that's, you know, taking the stack of, of rights um, into, into the back of your mind. Um, the current status is that I'm just budgeting, making a financial plan, time schedule, searching for partners and putting up a project organization because it is a big project. Um, I hope to finish it in 2017. Um, it's going to be that much work. What's the business model? We can help with uh, advice. You know, we offer help and advice. So if all the content is free, probably a lot of organizations will still get stuck in the implementation and they still need someone to hold their hand and to take them through. The future organization will be a company and a foundation. The foundation will be the owner of all the content that's created and the content or the company will make sure that it's updated and there's a flow. This is a typical construction in the Netherlands for organizations like these. Um, so I've got some questions for you. Raise your hands. Do you agree that we need this kind of manual? Cool. Question two, we can't do it by hands, but who should be interviewed? If you know anyone that's a professional and that does earn money by making Creative Commons material, point them to me. And question three is, if, if I made you a bit enthusiastic, how can you help me? Please let me know. Um, I need letters of support, funding, international input. I also still need some members for the Board of Advice or the, uh, the Board for the Foundation and partnerships for organizations that want to really be a partner in this. Um, contact me. thousand years when all our bones have disappeared and every word has been erased